In today's video, I'm going to be experimenting with some Markdown milk that Bam brought home from work and make my own milk powder in the dehydrator. Let's do it! I know it's not a great shot, but it's the best one I could get right now. This milk was £1.45, as you can see, and it was marked down to 60p. So first off, we need to open up our milk, obviously, just saying. And we're going to pour a cup of milk on each of the silicon mats that I have on my trays in my dehydrator. Now, two liters of milk is around about eight cups. So I did have to do two extra trays later on but this is all I had room for on this particular day because I was making something else underneath and you'll just have to wait for another video to find out what. Now I thought to start off with I would only put a half a cup on each mat but as it turned out that it was better off with a whole cup on each mat. Like everybody else, I sit there sometimes and I think, oh, you know, th this is going to take forever. Why, why am I going to do this? Remind me again why I'm doing this. So I wanted to show you exactly how long this part of the process actually takes. Since but this is the one that takes the longest, really. Apart from at the end, which, you know, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. But the point is, this is only like a five minute job and the rest takes care of itself. One thing I was very careful to make sure though was that I added the milk in the tray in situ. Why? Because I'm a klutz and it would have gone everywhere. Let's be honest. So, you know, it, it was better off I did this. Another thing I'll say is that you want to make sure that your milk goes all the way to the corners and edges of whatever tray or mat you are using. Uh, if you have one of the circular dehydrators, you'll probably use the fruit leather mat that comes with it. And that's fine. That's not a problem. It still works the same. For me, these ones I bought separately to my dehydrator and they are A4 sized silicon baking mats with a lip. Now I picked them up on eBay and they cost me a pound each. So far, to be honest, they've more than paid for themselves. And I use them in my dehydrator for any kind of liquids or really, really small things because the holes in my racks are quite large. Now the drying process for this is going to take at least 8 to 12 hours and you want to make sure that they are fully dry and later on in the video I will explain why. Would I do this overnight? Eh, possibly. If I set them off just before I was going to bed then I would consider doing them overnight because they can be left obviously 6 to 7 hours without any issues whatsoever. And I average around about six or seven hours sleep if I'm lucky on a good night. So, you know, that, that wouldn't worry me, but I am I know myself that if I had something like this going overnight, I would have to be up checking it and I wouldn't get any sleep. So I rather do it first thing in the morning when I'm doing the breakfast and coffee and all of that kind of thing. The other issue for me is because this is the first time I've done it, I don't, in this particular machine, I don't want to take any risks. So I want to make sure that it doesn't catch, it doesn't burn because it is possible for it to burn. You have to remember that dairy has a very high sugar count and as it condenses, it will burn. It absolutely will burn. So you don't want to, for any of that to happen. To be fair though, at 50 degrees Celsius, it's unlikely to happen. 
so yeah that's 50 degrees celsius or 120 degrees fahrenheit that you want to put your dehydrator on now i put mine on for eight hours i put it on for eight hours and then i gave it a little bit more afterwards after i checked it i did mine for a full 12 hours i think and then i just turned it off and went to bed and came and checked it in the morning So it's around about four o'clock in the afternoon at this point and I'm having a look at the drying milk and as you can see it is pretty much dry but if you can notice in those corners right at the end it is a little bit thicker and it's quite sticky still so I decided to put it on for an extra two hours just to be safe. Thankfully my dehydrator turns so itself off well. so I could go to bed happily knowing that it was taking care of itself and it wouldn't oh be a problem God. and it was only going to be on for an hour anyway. But if you have a look at this, it looks like a bit of plastic. So here we are, it's the next morning and we're going to deal with our first sheet. Now even though I gave it the extra little bit of time and so it had a full 14 hours there was still a little bit of stickiness on the end of the mat just remember this is the first time I've actually used my dehydrator that I have now to do this particular job and that rolling up of the mat thing oh. not a suggestion don't do it just pull the milk off it'll pull off in a sheet and that's fine I just thought it'd be really cool if it did this what happened was static electricity <laughs> don't just don't do it this way okay just do not do it this way it's a pain in the butt and getting the bigger pieces off is a lot easier than trying to get all those little fleckles off so don't yeah i would never do it that way again and i didn't do any of the other sheets that way either i just pulled it all off now with the tiny little bits of milk that are still a little bit sticky i have put them to the side they did go back in the dehydrator it didn't take long it took about an hour once they were in to finish off because they're just a little bit sticky on the back but you don't want to have anything wet go into anything dry that's going on the shelf because that would be silly now because of my oh so very big cleverness in pulling rolling up that mat um this took a little bit longer than it was meant to now the other mats only took me about two to three minutes each this one took me about six minutes you take into the consideration that I had eight mats no six was it six six mats um, you know that that's not very long it's about half an hour and it's not more than I would be willing to put into a project like this at any one time now let's talk about the cost of this whether it's worthwhile doing or not now I've had a quick squeeze on Google at the cost of milk powder right now so the cost of milk powder at the time that I am filming this is anywhere from a pound to three pounds for a hundred grams now it depends if it's whole milk skim milk whatever what supermarket you're buying it from all of that kind of thing but can I just tell you most dehydrated milk products are made in the same factory it's up to the people who are labeling and such to put a price on it. So if one supermarket's charging you one pound 98 for uh, 200 grams and another is charging you five pound for 300 grams, it, it just depends on where you shop. And of course then the supermarkets decide because you live in the middle of nowhere they're going to charge you 20% more than the city stores. So there's all of those things to consider plus the electric to run the dehydrator. Yes, I'm aware. However, if you noticed I was making something else in my dehydrator at the time as well. But you're going to have to wait to find out what that is because it's not in this video and I'm not telling you. 
So now that sheet's all done, I'm going to go and do the rest myself and we will be back. Ah, here we are at the blender. And as you can see, here's my lovely sheets of dehydrated milk. Now, so they actually kind of look a little bit like sheets of shattered plastic, you know, and it, it's quite disconcerting, really, but it's all good. Now, we're going to blend this to a really good powder. It, I did have to end up doing it twice, I'm not going to lie, but that's okay. We don't mind that. It's all good. It only took 30 seconds anyway. I'm not really that mad about it. But I did leave this one go for about a minute just to make sure that it got as much as possible through without shaking it around too much. But as you can see, it's just flipping around the blender, having the time of its life. So, again, was this worth the money? Actually, yes it was when i took into account what else i was making in the dehydrator at the time it absolutely made it worthwhile we also have solar panels and i make sure to only use the dehydrator when the sun is on them now i'm pouring this from the blender to a bowl i wouldn't normally do this if i was just doing this myself and not for you guys i just wanted to show you guys how shimmery and pretty it was before it goes in the bowl but as you can see there's a couple more little bits there that to be fair, I'm not that worried about them not being powdered right up. And we're going straight into our jar. I'm using my wide mouth funnel for this. And we're just popping it straight into a clean, dry jar. Now, what I don't want you guys to forget is to put a date on this. Now, if you're making more to fill the jar, go for it and put the label on afterwards. But at this point I wasn't going to make any more for now so I put the label on. I also snuck in the silica pouch to make sure that it was kept dry in there. So there you have it, homemade dehydrated milk powder. So easy. Just want to say thank you very much to my lovely Patreons and to all of you who have got this far and watched my video and I will see you again very very soon. Have fun, bye!